Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to define a data service in WSO2 EI from the ad admin console of WSO2. Data service is a feature offered by WSO2 to expose a data set. So a data set can be a database table or a view as a service. So it can be a SOAP based service or a REST service. Let's see how to get it done. To configure a data service, the first thing that we need to do is to log into the admin console of WSO2. I'm using the user, the default username and password provided with the product to log in. On the left hand, on the left hand uh, window, uh, you can see the different uh, services offered by the product. Under the data service, click on create. You have to give a name for the data service. So here I'm going to expose an employee data set as a, a REST service. So just I'm giving it a name, employee service. You have an optional uh, names. You have an option to define a namespace. This is optional. And you can define, uh, you can leave a description about, uh, about the service. So I'm just giving a random description. Then moving on to the advanced configurations, click on enable streaming, which is selected by default. And then when it comes to the transport settings, we have options to expose the service as HTTP, HTTPS, um, and local, which is like a remote method call and JMS. So for this demo, I'm unchecking local. Uh, I have only HTTP and HTTPS defined. Click on next to move to the next screen. Now we are at data sources. We, we need to add a data source from where we are going to fetch data to expose as a service. So if you want to know how to add a data source to WSO2, I have another video uh, explaining that and the link to that video is given there. So here I have a data, sources, uh, a data source already uh, defined. So I have to just give a define a data source ID. So I'm I'm going to give employee DB. That's my data source ID. And coming to the data source types, if you have already a data source configured, click on Carbon Data Sources. This will display the pre the the data sources which are already configured with WSO2. So my H2DB is my database. I'm using an H2 database. Click on next. If you want to enable O data and click this checkbox, else click on save. Move on, click on next. Now here we need to add a query. So this is the query that is going to fetch the data for us. You need to give us a unique ident um, unique name for the query ID. So it can be uh, it can be as simple as query one, or it can, uh, you can give a name that actually indicates the type of operation it's going to perform. So I'm going to configure it as get employee so that I know what this query does. From the data source list, select the employee database that we configured in the previous section. Now we need to write the SQL query which will actually fetch the data. So I'm going to write select and then I have the list of fields to be fetched from the database. These are the fields I'll be fetching from the database from. And then I have a schema from where I, my table resides and my table name is employee. So you can see here, this is the table from where I'm going to fetch data. So this is my query. And if you pass and if you need to pass any input parameters to uh, to add to the work loss, you can do that by uh, using the generate input mapping section. In this particular case, it's going to be a simple get operation. So I'm not uh, adding any work loss. I need the output type to be in JSON. So I'm configuring it as JSON. Use column numbers to map the fetch data to the output. So in the entries, instead of entries, I'm going to configure it as employees. And 
and then uh, this is going to be employee now in the field one I'll I'll configure the employee employee ID is my is going to be my first field so that's column number one and my first name is going to be column number two this is how we map uh, the columns so dollar one indicates the first column I've completed the uh, the mapping so I have six fields and uh, they are mapped to uh, the six fields that are fetching from the query mentioned above so save this query and then moving on now um, this is basically for SOAP operations so since I'm going to expose uh, this service as a rest service I'm leaving this just passing this one now for rest resources I need to add a resource here so I'm defining my resource as employees and I'm leaving the description blank and then um, the resource method is it's going to be a get method and then I'm mapping the query to the resource save and now we have completed the configurations click on finish once this is done uh, in few seconds your service will appear here just do a refresh of uh, refresh on the on the portal. Yeah, the employee service is available here. Once you click on the service, you'll get the URL on which the service is available. So this is the URL. I'm going to call this URL from my Postman. Open Postman, and then paste the URL, and then our service our resource is going to be employees employees now in the headers make sure that you're sending the accept header as application json for you to get a response in json format so once that is done click on send and that's it the data in a database table is converted as a rest service now that we have seen how to expose a service as a REST service, uh, this is like a quick reference for you to easily remember the steps required. So the first thing is to configure a data source from where we need to fetch the data. Next, we have to add queries to fetch the data depending on the requirement and then configure input and output parameters. The third step is to define an operation or a resource depending on whether you are um, going to define a SOAP or a REST service. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.